let's talk about some blueprint stuff. I'm just in a random project here today, and I want to talk about events and functions, because they kind of are similar, but there's some minor difference between the two of them, which makes them useful for different stuff. So we've probably all seen events, like event tech here, we've got a debug key f, which I used for well, debugging. At some point we've got begin play, we've got input actions, which also are events, and a lot of other stuff. And of course you can make your own custom events, uh, we'll just keep this as name custom event, in which you can then add your own stuff, let's add like a print string here, and then we can call that custom event as a node in any other event or function. That is all nice and well, but if we come over here to the left hand side of our screen, we can also uh, create a new function. That creates a new little tab here, so if anything, for organizational purposes, it's quite nice to be able to have one tab per function. Uh, and this creates a function, which we can do much of the same thing with, we can do a print string, and then in our event graph, or in any other function inside of this blueprint, uh, we can now also call a uh, new function, which seems to be rather similar. Both of them you can add inputs to, so we can say, hey, this function, uh, I want a, uh, like a string that I want to pull in to print out, and that will then be a parameter that we can pull through. And if I now uh, call that custom event again, it has an input for a string. We can do the exact same thing with a function. So this far, they seem really, really similar, don't they? And that is because they are. They're both ways to execute a specific bits of code. But this video isn't about how they are similar, because that is quite obvious. It's about the differences and when to use which. So let's get started first things first, and that is in the functions. The reason that you will be using a function is if you want to have something that returns a value as well, because a, a function can have a return node, which has outputs. So if you go back here, we can see, selecting our custom event, we can only give inputs. When we have a function, we can also add an output. So the return node can have uh, a, I don't know, whatever kind of variables you want as an output. We can just do a string here, which we can output whatever we input it or something like that. What is more reasonable to do is instead of making this a print string, we can say, hey, this uh, new function, what we want to do is, for instance, we, just as an example, uh, we want a float array. So we'll make that a float and then make that an array type. And then we'll output the average value of that array, something like that, right? So now what we can do is we can add a for each loop, which will add up everything inside of this array. And this is where the next very important thing comes in. Because if you look at the bottom left corner here, we'll have local variables in this function. When we go back into the event graph, that disappears. So we can make variables that only exist within the context of this function. The moment this function finishes executing, that value is then also uh, immediately destroyed. So when you next run the function again, it doesn't still have that value. Unlike all of the values that you have in your normal variables here, they will just stick around until they are updated. Local variables don't have that, which can be really nice because every time you start a function, you'll start with a fresh set of variables. So let's uh, make a local variable here and we'll call that something like total and it'll just be a float value, which we uh, set equal to itself plus the array elements every single time. And this is just some basic math, right? We first add everything up together, then we have a value for total, and then that total value we will uh, divide by this array's length, which will get us the average from the entire array, and that can then go into our output node here in our return node once the thing is completed. Now we have a function where we can pass in a float array and return a average. This is something you cannot do with an event, because an event doesn't really have an endpoint like that. It doesn't have a return node. At some point, it just kind of stops. So here you can see we have the float array, and then on the right side we have the output pin. 
This is a very simple function, uh, but that's the basic idea of return value. So why in that case would you ever use an event is the next question, right? Because these functions have very nice uh, functionality where you can like return values and you can store local variables temporarily. It's very, very nice. Why ever use an event? And that is because functions just execute everything inside them immediately back to back to back to back to back they have no sense of uh, timing you can't do anything timing related with them and that is where events come in so if i have this custom event when i fire this maybe i want to like delay this for a certain amount of time and then print a string with an event that's very easy you can just do that in an event graph in a function uh if i try to add like a delay node here we don't really have that delay node we can like set delay length but that is a node that's entirely unrelated to any of this so we can't set any delays inside of a function and that in itself is kind of annoying but a much bigger deal than just normal delays is the ability to use timelines so if we want to add a timeline to this we can do that and then we have our timeline all well and good and we have play play from start all that good stuff we've probably seen timelines before right uh inside of a function you can't really do that let's try add timeline oh you see it doesn't exist in here because it is a timed node a node that deals with uh timing so that is everything to do with delay timelines those kind of things anything with one of these little clocks here uh which are called latent nodes meaning that they wait around for a certain amount of time before executing the next thing cannot be placed inside functions so that's something you only can do in the event graph which is uh, a good reason to use events another reason to use events is these little red pins that you have over here you've probably seen them before and uh, you can't really use them in functions and what these are used for is for uh, binding things to event dispatches i have an entire video about event dispatches and how they work when they're useful um long story short an event dispatcher is just a variable that can have references to other events and when that variable is activated all of the events linked to it fire off uh, at the same time that only works for events you can't do that for a function so if i make an event dispatcher here uh test uh delegates they're called delegates in c plus uh, and i say hey i want to bind something to this I can bind any event that has a matching uh, signature, so a matching amount of parameters uh, to this, which uh, at this point would mean only things with no parameters, by just connecting them up like this. And now whenever anywhere else in the code I uh, use the call test delegate, this custom event will run as well. So that's a really nice way to uh, just make systems which allow you to just say, hey, uh, for instance, when you hit something with a sword, saying, okay, I just hit something with a sword, any like function or any object that cares about that, you can fire off whatever you have fired, um, whatever you have lined up to correspond with that. Because also other objects can listen in for delegates on each other. Again, I've got an entire video about this. Uh, the main point here is that events can be bound to event dispatchers because they're called event dispatchers of course uh, functions however cannot if you have anything timing related or if it needs to be bound to a event dispatcher you use an event in any other case really you kind of always just use uh, functions it's easier to keep things organized the fact that they have the return values uh, can be quite nice and if you have a function with no execution pins in it as well, which uh, in this case I don't think uh, that'll do, but let's say we just wanted to get a random thing out of this array. That's already a thing that Unreal uh, provides you uh, with by default, but let's just say uh, that that's something we want to do. So we want to uh, get a random array item here and pass that through. There's no real execution in this, but we can set this to be a pure node, and that will turn it into one of those little green nodes that we have seen before. So now you can see that this uh, function has changed from a normal execution node to uh, one of these green nodes, so those are pure. 
on the other hand, we've got this call in editor. And I'm just going to go over to a uh, empty test actor that I've made here uh, with a new function on it, which I've marked as call in editor. And we'll just add like a print string there to show that it works because it's just going to be easier to show on an empty actor. Uh, and I've dragged one of those into the level here and we can see we've got a new function which is now just a button so anything we put in that function we can now run whenever we are not actually playing the game which is grand because if you've got some stuff that is more like editor utility related or like setting up certain information for a, a certain character or whatever you can run that function in the editor which again is something that an event cannot do so we can press this button and that will just print hello again if you want to do something like spawning in a couple more actors around it or something along those lines uh, you can put anything you want into this like doing a construction script where you want to randomize certain aspects you can make a randomize button which just re-randomizes those aspects about that actor and you can make that a call in editor function and with that, we've covered the most important differences and use cases for both events and functions. For the most part, if you don't need any of the upsides and benefits that either one of them provides, you can just use one or the other. It doesn't actually matter that much. But generally speaking, I personally like to do things as much as possible in functions unless I specifically need something that an event can offer me. One last thing that I want to show you is if I don't use uh, the event itself, but I want to make a child blueprint. You can override both uh, whatever an event does and whatever a function does. So let's make a child blueprint real quick because the method for them is ever so slightly different. If we go into the event graph, we can see the functions. We have this menu called override. And here we can override a bunch of functions that pre-exist on any of the parent class. So that's uh, starting with actor, the uh, blueprint third-person character, the pawn, and we can choose any of these to override and put our own custom code for this class in. So the thing that we just made a, a moment ago, we can override our custom event, and the way you do that is just by putting back in the custom event and putting any code you want uh, after it. If you want to override a function, you have to do it through this menu uh, by clicking uh, this override call an editor. The functions will automatically have a parent call as well. So this will do everything that the parent function does first, and then you can add some of your own code uh, after it. If you don't want the parent functionality to run at all, the way you do that is we just remove that and now we can make an entirely new custom function with the same name that the parent has. Uh, the upside of that is if a different object calls the function uh, with a reference to the parent's class, but it's actually like this object, it will just do whatever this function says. So for a quick example, the way I used to have it in my combat system in my own game is I have a general weapon class, which has a special attack function. And that special attack function then gets overwritten by every individual weapon's, uh, well, special functionality. So that is something that you can use uh, that for, which is really, really cool. Again, if you want to uh, understand more about child blueprints, I have a separate video about that as well. For events, it doesn't automatically add those uh, back in. So what you want to do is you want to right-click and just simply uh, add call to parent function. And that then adds a um, node which allows you to call the parent, uh, which theoretically, if you really wanted to, you could then place this in a different position, like on begin overlap, if, if you really wanted to, uh, for some reason, which is a neat possibility. Uh, I've never really seen a use <laughs> for that, but it is a possibility. You can do it. So that's the last little bit that I wanted to show about like inheritance uh, with both of them. Uh, they can both do the exact same thing. You just set it up slightly differently. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 